And in the last video I showed you how to get a uh, new set of default screens into your actual EFIS. Let's have a look at custom screens. Slightly different, custom screen is basically like starting with a, a blank page. They're loaded onto your EFIS display just in a very slightly different way. You don't zip them into um, this uh, defiled opt-in um, file, uh, you just transfer the files across into your screens folder. All you have to do is get those custom screen files into the screens folder and uh, then tell the EFIS that you want to use custom screens. So let's go straight into it. Go into design mode and let's just say there's a few things I like on the uh, MGL default. So I'm going to select default flight module, select the correct one. Here's the list of stuff on the MGL one, and uh, I'm going to steal the horizon from them so I don't have to bother making my own. I might take the uh, speed and altitude tapes as well, so I'm going to uh, find them in here. I'm going to hold down the control key, and this allows me to select multiple items at the same time just by clicking on them. So I'm going to find uh, drawing primitives. That's the shading around the airspeed tape there. Airspeed tape, I'm just going to go through and click all these. Uh, alarm message field I don't want. On the other side we've got more drawing primitives, the altitude tape, some VSI related things. I'm still holding down the control key while I do this to uh, click on all these. You can, and the same thing works for deselecting things as well. Roller digits, altitude, yes, I want that. That's all I want. So I've done that pretty quick. You'll um, learn when you play around with it more. You'll learn how to do this, and you'll get quicker and better at it. I right click, and I'm going to copy. 17 items copied to the clipboard. They'll stay on the clipboard until either I copy something else and they get overwritten, uh, or until I shut out of the actual EFIS program itself. As long as the EFIS program is open still, uh, I can go and have lunch or whatever, and those things will still stay on the clipboard. So I've stolen those. I'm going to get out of this. In fact, I didn't need to do that. I'll go back into the design mode. Now I'm going to design a custom flight module. So this is a custom screen on page one. Okay, new empty screen file, flight1.sdf has been created. That's what I want, one being page one. And there it is, just a blank file, nothing displayed. I'm going to right click in the uh, items panel here and I'm going to paste them in. doesn't matter where I paste them because there's nothing there at the moment so I'm just going to paste that end of list and there they are. So that's all the stuff I stole from the uh, the default one which I liked and I've now put them into a custom um, flight screen. You can see the blank bands at the top and the bottom were where MGL had their um, uh, their radios and so on at the top and they had their engine instruments down the bottom. You don't have to have those there uh, if you don't want them there. Let's um, change the horizon. We'll shift it up a bit right up to the top and then we'll go vertical size. Uh, when you're playing around with horizons and you increase the vertical size it, it um, extends it at the bottom of the horizon. So I'm just going to keep this scrolling through until it fills the whole screen because I want it to fill the whole screen. If I wanted to I could overlay engine instruments on that. Um, I'd suggest you actually leave a blank space if you're going to put engine instruments anywhere. Um, if you start overlaying too many things on top of other things it can get a little bit messy so try and reduce that as much as you possibly can. But you can do it if you want. All right, that's it. That looks pretty good to me. And you can go and add some more stuff if you like. Right, so now we have a new custom flight screen on page one. What we would now do, um, the simulator does this just slightly differently. Simulator's already saved that as a custom screen in the screens folder. 
Now, if you wanted to transfer this to your actual EFIS, you would go to the File Manager. You'd go to the Screens folder in your simulator, and there it is, Flight1.stf. That was the one that I just created. And you drag that across to your SD card on your computer into the root directory. Then you'd go and plug your SD card into your real EFIS. You'd go to Menu. You'd go to... Uh, you, you can do this a couple of ways. You can use the file manager like we did for the, um, for the new default screens. Or you can do Install Tasks. Scroll down. Install Screen Files to Screens Folder. So what that selection will do is that'll take the new screen files that you copied onto your SD card and it'll just automatically install those screen files they, they should be in the root directory of your SD card and it'll install them into the screens folder on your EFIS display. That's the easy way of doing it. If you want to go into the EFIS file manager you can manually copy them across into the screens folder. They've got to go into the screens folder. All right. So we've got the custom, our new custom screen into the EFA. So why is it still displaying the default here? Well, the simple answer to that is that we haven't told it to use a custom screen. It, it doesn't know any better. It's just displaying the default. So what we do is we go into menu. We go to system setup menu. We need to scroll down a bit here and find standard system selections right here is where we tell it how to use the default screens or how to use our custom screens and you can mix and match them too if you don't have the correct settings here your display can get quite messy uh, you, you might have um, defaults overlaid on custom screens and so on um, with your, your engine and your fuel and your flight um, pages right so I'm going to tell it, I've only done screen one, a flight screen on screen one, and that's all I want. So I'm going to go down here to flight, individual, screen, custom, enables. Screen one, I don't care about the rest. They can stay on the default settings. I'm just going to do screen one. It says set by selection. I don't want that. I want a custom one. Here we go. Custom design in screens folder because I've got one there. All right. The trick here though is that uh, the way MGL divide their defaults up, you've got engine uh, components, fuel components and info components. You don't have to do it that way, you can have them all on the flight page, on the flight screen. But um, what I need to do here is make sure so it doesn't start overlaying the defaults on top of my custom one. I need to go to engine, screen one custom design in screens folder. Now I don't have a custom engine page, that doesn't matter. All it means is it, it won't display the default one. Fuel, screen one, custom design in screens folder. And I'll do the same for the info page, custom design in screens folder. Let's see what happens. There we go. Now on page one, because I've told the EFIS to use my new custom flight page, that's what it's displaying. Page two onwards, I didn't care. I left them on the default settings. So if I go to page two, it's now still on the default setting, page three, page four, and so on. So doing custom screens is no problem. Uh, all of my own screens in my plane are um, custom screens, but you must, once you've loaded them into the screens folder, you have to tell the EFIS to actually use those screens. Otherwise it will revert to its defaults. And um, that's it, as far as getting a custom screen in there. Um, I'll do some more videos on some more advanced um, editing and changes. In the meantime, enjoy playing around. Cheers.